In this video I'll be looking at piecewise functions and then we're going to do one application of a min-max type of problem. So let's go ahead and get started. It says here a function that's defined by two or more equations over a, specific, a specified domain. So a piecewise function is a function that is defined by two or more equations over a specified domain. So what do we mean by that? Well, if you look here, it says f of x equals y plus 2 for x less than or equal to negative 1. So if my input is either negative 1 or smaller, I'm basically going to use the function y equals x plus 2. Now, if um, x is between negative 1 and 2, not including either negative 1 or 2, then we're going to use y equals x squared. And then finally, if our x value, or our input, is greater or equal to 2, then our output is going to be 5. Or we're basically using the equation y equals 5. All right, so if you look at the first one here, a, f of negative 3, Let's see, f of negative 3, well, negative 3 is certainly going to be less than or equal to negative 1, and so we're going to use the first piece, x plus 2. And so basically, whoops, let me change colors here. So basically, f of negative 3, we're going to use x plus 2, so it'll be negative 3 plus 2. So we're using the first piece there. And of course, that's going to be negative 1. All right, let's look at the next one, f of 1.5. Now, notice 1.5, again, an x value or an input, is between negative 1 and 2. And so this time, we're going to be using this piece, y equals x squared. So f of 1.5, we're going to square that that input. So it'll be 1.5 squared. And uh, let's see, I think that's 2.25. Let me double check my work here. Oh goodness, where did I put that? It is 2.25. Okay, so let's move on to, actually, I'd encourage you to try the other two. All right, let's see how you did. So f of 8, so here we're going to use this piece because our input is greater than 2. And so we're going to have, um, well, our output's going to be f uh, 5 no matter what. So f of 8 is just 5. All right, last one. f of negative 1. Well, negative 1 is going to be part of this piece here because that's when our input, or x, is less than or equal to negative 1. And so f of negative 1 is going to be negative 1 plus 2, which is 1. All right, let's go ahead and move on to the next slide. So now we're going to do a graph. It says graph the piecewise function. Use the graph to find um, the domain and range for the function. So our function is f of x equals 1 half x, and that's for x uh, less than 0. Or it's going to equal x plus 3 when x is greater or equal to 0. So notice 0 is lighter, like our turning point here x equals 0 is what I call a borderline value. And so when we do our graph, we're going to want to plug 0 in to, to both of the two functions. And that's going to help us to see what's happening when our x, well, basically when we go from one piece to the other. All right, so when x is less than 0, we know that y is equal to 1 half x. And so let's go ahead and make a table of values. And we know we want to have 0 on there, and then we need some other values less than 0. So I chose negative 1 and negative 2. 
So if I plug in 0, 1 half times 0 is 0. Now keep in mind, this point is not going to be on the graph. It's going to be a, a borderline value, and I'll show you how I graph it. If I plug in negative 1, 1 half times negative 1 is negative 1 half. And now if we plug in negative 2, uh, we're going to get negative 1 here. Negative 2 over 2, or negative 1. And so let's go ahead and plot these points and draw the line. We know it's a line because it's a linear equation since x is to the first power. And so that's the piece of the graph when x is less than 0. By the way, notice I, I put this little gray line there. That's just to help me remember where we go from one function to the other. All right, so now let's look at the other piece. For x greater or equal to 0, we're going to be graphing uh, y equals x plus 3. So again, we want to make sure that we put 0 in, as a choice for x, and then uh, some other values where um, we're greater than 0. So how about 0, 1, and 2? So if you plug in 0 into this piece, y equals 0 plus 3, that's going to be 3. If you plug in 1, 1 plus 3 will give you 4. If you plug in 2 for x, 2 plus 3 will give you 5. And so when we graph this piece, it's going to look just like that. Now I want you to notice when I did the first graph, I put a hole here because the point 0, 0 was not part of that graph, but that was the borderline value. We have this line here goes all the way up to that point. And then once we get to 0, you can see we start on the other graph at y equals 3. All right, so now we're supposed to give the domain and range of this function. Now if you go from left to right, notice the graph goes forever left and forever right. Now when we get here, notice at 0, there's no point on this piece but there is a point here. And so we're going to include all the values from negative infinity until x equals 0. But then from now on, we have all the points where x is greater than 0 at, on this piece here. And so our domain, let me erase these marks and things here. So our domain is going to be all real numbers. In other words, you can plug in any x value into this function, and you're going to get an output value. So we can plug in any value as an input. So as far as the range is concerned, that's a little different. Now we're going to go from the lowest to the highest point. Notice there is no lowest or highest point, but we have this gap right here. And so basically, we're going to start our range in negative infinity land until we get to this point where y is equal to 0. And then there's a, this gap, and then y starts at 3 and goes to infinity. Now notice we didn't count 0 as being a point on the graph. Or I should say uh, the point 0, 0 is not on the graph, so we're not including that, that value there for y. However, 3, or at this point, 3 is on the graph, and so now it's going to be a bracket, and we'll go from 3 to infinity. And so that's your range. All right, let's move on to the next problem. So first of all, I'll tell you that um, I'll make a video where I show you how to graph this on your graphing calculator. But um, you could graph it the way we just graphed the last problem, by plotting points. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and give the graph. So we have y equals x plus 2 when x is less than or equal to negative 1. That's this piece. And then y is equal to x squared from negative 1 until, until you get to 2. And then finally, um, when x is greater or equal to 2, now we are at 5, or y equals 5. And so this is what your graph should look like. And again, you'll be allowed to use your graphing calculator to do this. Now let's look at domain and range. 
So similar to the last problem, if you know, with our domain, we'll go from left to right, and you can see it goes forever left and forever right. And so we're going to go from negative infinity to infinity. You can also see that we don't miss any x values as inputs. Even when we get to 2, we are going to have a, an output right there. And so let me erase all these points. So our domain is all real numbers here. As for the range, we have a lowest point, and then we get to a highest point right here, and then there's that gap that's right in here. So the y values are going to go from negative infinity to 4, and then notice what happens after that. The output will always be 5. So how do we write that? We'll say union, and then the set with just 5 in it. You actually have to use braces here. All right, let's move on. All right, so here's our application problem I was talking about. It says a man plans to enclose a rectangular area using 80 yards of fencing. If the rectangle is x yards wide, express the enclosed area A as a function of x. Now keep in mind, or actually I should say that this is one of, this is a, a problem that's going to prepare you for things that you'll do when you get to calculus. And so it's a great problem for that, to get you ready. And uh, it's less than elementary. It, it's more challenging than the ones we did previously as far as applications go. But let me show you how we do this. So first of all, it says the rectangle is x yards wide. And we're basically supposed to write an area function, um, which is a function of x. So here's how we do it. So first of all, we want to draw a rectangle. And we're going to be, uh, x is going to be our width. Now, we also are given that the perimeter is 80. We have a formula for perimeter. It's p is equal to 2w plus 2l. And we, and we know that p is 80, so I can plug that in. And we know that our width is x. And so I'll go ahead and plug in x where the w was. So here's the key. We're writing an area that's a function of x. That means, basically, we want to write the area in terms of one variable, which is x. So what we need to do here is take this equation that we just found and solve it for the length, and we'll, we'll have the length in terms of x. So let's do that. So you, sh you should uh, subtract 2x from both sides, because we're trying to solve for l. And so I'm going to go ahead and move over here. And if I want to solve for l, I need to divide both sides by 2. So we're going to get the length is equal to 40 minus x. And so now I have a way to write the length using x. And so now we're ready to write the area function. We know the area of a rectangle is length times width. But we said the width is x, and the length is 40 minus x. And so we can say the area, or a of x, is equal to x times 40 minus x. Now keep in mind, I could have just used an a here. But because we're writing function notation, we're writing it as a of x. And really all that does is stress the fact that the area is dependent on what our input x is. All right, so let me just simplify this. We'll write this as 40x minus x squared. I just distributed there. All right, so it says find the domain. How do we do that? Well, first of all, um, this area is, you know, the length and width are going to have some length to them. And so I'm going to tell you that the x would have to be greater than 0, or our width has to be greater than 0. And also our length, which is 40 minus x, has to be greater than 0. Now if we solve this inequality here, I want to subtract 40 on both sides. I get minus x is greater than negative 40. Now I would remind you here, this is a negative 1x. We're going to divide each side by negative 1. And when we do that, it's the nature of inequalities that when we divide by a negative on both sides, in order to keep, um, in order for it to continue to work, you have to reverse the symbol. 
that's always the case with inequalities. And so we'll reverse the symbol to a less than symbol. When we divide on each side, we end up with x is less than 40. So we're saying that our width is greater than 0 and less than 40. So we would write that 0 to 40. That's our domain, which is what we were asked to find. All right, so on letter C here, it says, using the graph of the function below, determine the dimensions that yield the maximum area. So basically, I've graphed this function, this area function, and you can see we have a maximum right here. And so when x is equal to 20, or when our width is equal to 20 yards, we have a maximum area of 400 square yards. That's what this point is telling us. Now, the length is equal to 40 minus x. Well, that would be 40 minus 20, which is 20. So in other words, the, the, air, or the, uh, I'm sorry, the width and the length are going to be equal to 20, and that's what's going to give us our maximum area. So in, in answering our question, it said determine the dimensions that yield the maximum area. I would answer it this way. When the length and width are 20 yards, we have a maximum area, which in fact is 400 square yards. And that's the end of this video.